Hey there, Central Ohio. I'm 10 Weather Impact meteorologist Michael Barons alongside meteorologist Aaron White. And what? it's been a great day. We've had a, you know, a lot of sunshine out there. Temperatures have been up, getting close to 80 now. And yeah, not bad. Honestly, probably the warmest day left this week. I mean, Friday is sort of making a contender run at some yeah. warmer air, but we are really just getting right back into that below average pattern. Yeah, which I know a lot of people were enjoying, you know, that nice cool down we had just over the last couple of weeks and another one coming our way and just kind of gives us a feel of fall now. Yeah. And you know, looking forward to the cooler weather. And honestly, the best thing about it has been just the lack of humidity. <laughs> I feel like just stepping outside and just not being uncomfortable. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> it has definitely been nice. But, you know, we do have some changes to track yeah. on our way, including rain heading our way. It feels like forever since we've actually had to really talk about has. rain. But, you know, enough of it coming tomorrow. We do have a 10 TV weather impact alert day in place for the morning hours. Our biggest concern is going to be the commute and just how much time that might actually take you tomorrow because this rain's going to really start to pick up between about 6 to 7 a.m. in terms of some of the heavier impacts moving through Franklin County. We know how much that rain can slow down uh, that morning commute out there. So that's why we have that impact day in place Thursday morning. Not expect severe weather, not expecting flooding, but we are expecting that impact to travel during the rush hour. So make sure you allow extra time as you head out there tomorrow. This afternoon, things looking pretty good across central Ohio. We've seen the cloud cover pick up over the last couple of hours. We may see a stray pop up somewhere in the region this afternoon, but most of us will stay dry and we will be warm. Not quite to average, but not far from it. 81 at this hour here in the city. Those winds now coming from the west southwest pulling in that warmer air. Most of central Ohio into the 80s at this hour as warm as 83 in Newark, 82 Circleville, 83 Marysville, 84 Kenton. Those temperatures will stay in the 80s for the next couple hours again, save for a stray pop up this afternoon. That's about what you're looking at as you head out the door. There will be a breeze to come along with this warmth. Again, those winds coming from the southwest right now gusting as high as 24 in Newark, 20 20 here in the city, 21 Lancaster again from that warm direction. Going to keep those temperatures up this afternoon. We'll stay in the low 80s for the next several hours. Once we head into the overnight, we'll start to push the temperatures down some. Not going to get as cool as it has for the past several mornings. We're only going to be dropping into the mid 60s there by 3 a.m. We're still dry by that point, but you'll notice the cloud cover increasing throughout those overnight hours. Again, that rain could get to those western counties as early as that three to four o'clock time frame, but it will be a little bit later before it makes it to us here in Columbus. Tomorrow's forecast starts off with those scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm out there again, not expected to be any kind of really severe weather maker out there. Southwest winds continue tomorrow, but temperatures much colder out there. We're getting down to that 70 uh, degree afternoon high. Of course, this will be after that rain moves through. We're not really going to see much in the way of a warm up behind those showers. As far as the rain chances go, we're sitting at about 60% as we head into tomorrow. Most of us should see some rainfall out there, but we can't guarantee that everyone will pick up the rain. We dry out as we head into Friday, but Friday evening into Saturday is kind of our next rainmaker after we get past the broad one that comes through tomorrow morning. The question will be just what side of this divide does that rain fall on? I think we have at least a small chance for some rain out there for Friday night football. I think that carries into Saturday morning, but by the time we head to say Saturday afternoon, Ohio State, I think all of that rain chances pretty much pushed its way out of the region and then we're back to dry weather as we head through the rest of the weekend. Speaking of rain, nothing on the radar as of this hour here in central Ohio. Again, we'll keep our eyes peeled for a pop up or two this afternoon. Big picture across the state shows some of those clouds starting to flare up again. Got a little bit of thunderstorm activity in northern Kentucky. That's about to cross into southern Ohio. So again, could see that pop up out there, but the bigger rainmaker is still back to the north and west. You can see the rain over in portions of Michigan back to Illinois, dropping into Indiana at this hour. That system heading our way as we head through the next several hours and into tonight. So let's go ahead and track things for you. Hour by hour looks like this. Next couple hours again, pop up or two, a possibility this afternoon, but we're talking like 20% or less kind of rain chance here in the region. So most all of us will stay dry. We're still mostly 
mostly dry through midnight tonight. Again, maybe a stray shower pops up elsewhere across the region, but the big thing we're watching is going to be that frontal system heading our way as we get into early Thursday. You see that rain pushing into those western counties 3 4 a.m. starts to get to Columbus by 5 in the morning. Pushes continuously through 6 7 o'clock. I think that's when those heavier showers come through our region. After that starts to push into the eastern counties. We'll kind of wrap up the rain once we get toward about 10 o'clock. Could see a few showers beyond that point, but by then most of the consistent heavier rain is gone. We'll start to trend back toward a dry afternoon forecast and we'll be dry as we head into at least the start of your Friday. We'll keep a close eye on those storms as they push out again. We're not expecting severe weather here in central Ohio, but that could change as we get deeper into the day. Eastern part of the region under a level one out of five risk for severe weather. That does appear to include portions of Guernsey County, maybe just a sliver there of Muskingum County. Not many of our counties under that area, but we will watch it. Wind would be the biggest concern out there tomorrow, possibly some heavy rain, but again, these threats are all very low. This is not really expected to be a severe weather system. Let's fast forward beyond Thursday into your Friday. We'll keep an eye on some moisture again that could come into the mix as we head toward Friday evening. Again, not willing to say that we're going to get a ton of rain here Friday as of yet, but we're watching those trends very carefully because that rain threat will be increasing after sundown on Friday. That'll continue into early Saturday before this next system kind of pushes its way on out and again leaves us with cooler temperatures and drier weather for the weekend ahead. Here's your 10 weather impact seven day forecast. Again, we do that 10 TV weather impact alert day in place for the first half of the day on Thursday. That is for that rain that comes during the morning commute. Again, not expected to be a severe weather maker, but we'll keep a close eye on that. Then Friday into Saturday is when we have that next threat for rain. Right now, I'm kind of hedging more of those rain bets toward early Saturday. But again, we have to watch Friday evening carefully because you may see some rain out there for the second half of those games. I've gone ahead and indicated that here in our first and 10 forecast. Our temperatures will stay in the 60s throughout that evening hour. So again, we'll watch for those rain chances out there. And of course, keep you updated here on 10 TV. The rest of the forecast heading into the weekend. Well, we get back up to that 80 degree temperature on Friday, but then is right back down into the 70s for this weekend. Low 70s. In fact, by Sunday, we will start to warm up just a little bit by the time we head to the other side of the forecast there in early next week. But again, just kind of a below average temperature pattern. Yeah. Settling in. Yeah, which is, uh, you know, kind of nice to have those uh, cooler days here, especially uh, just in time for the weekend. Last weekend was perfect for yeah. the Buckeyes win on Saturday. We had sunshine, low humidity, temperatures were in the mid 70s and looks like we'll be even cooler this weekend. Yeah, even cooler this weekend. And like I said, I think if we do get that rain to trend into Saturday, should be gone before we get. I think it's like a 3:30. Yeah. Kick. So I think we should be dry by that point in the afternoon. Yeah. Perfect timing for that. And it's going to be feeling a little bit more fall like. So yeah, let's absolutely. go ahead and talk about some fall. Yeah. Switching gears here. Our long term outlook. Get, we're getting closer to fall. Definitely closer than you yeah. might think. <laughs> And I know, Aaron, you've been taking a look at just uh, what we have to expect as we start to head into fall. Yeah, so uh, looking kind of at the uh, month of September and uh, just how the trends are going to be, and especially as we look ahead to the rest of the month and going into October, getting ready for the official start of the fall season and, of course, the fall colors that we're going to get to enjoy here as we head into the month of October. So let's talk about the fall when it actually officially begins. Again, meteorological fall has already started but fall begins officially on September 22nd at 2 19 p.m. That's when we reach the equinox and officially starting the fall season and starting to see some more of those cooler days. But as we look at the outlook for the month of September and there really aren't any strong indications that we're going to see a lot of varying in terms of our temperatures, more of the Higher chances for above normal temperatures are going to be staying out across the central and northern plains where they could see some mild temperatures. But there are, are indications that we are going to see a return to some more of those mild temperatures as we get into the middle of the month. Despite the cooler temperatures that we have here going in towards the weekend with those highs in the lower 70s here for Saturday and Sunday, that's about 10 degrees below normal. Average high for this time of year is around the low 80s here as we look at the early part of September. But by the end of the month, our average high is down to the lower 70s. Now, that's for temperatures. We look at precipitation. 
as we saw with the month of August, it tended to be pretty dry. We actually ended up on the top 10 driest August on record with uh, less than an inch of rainfall, and that trend has continued already here for the first couple of days of September. We have that rain coming in here for tomorrow. Amounts not looking that impressive, and so overall, it may end up being a little bit drier here with some of the higher chances for rain staying a bit further to our south. But as we talk about the fall outlook, and of course, going into the fall season and getting those fall colors, well, what we need are some of the cooler days. We need some of those days where we have a lot of sunshine, nights a bit cooler to allow the overall change to happen. And what's going on with that is the chlorophyll. That's what causes the green to show up, that green color for all the leaves. That actually breaks down when we get those cooler days and the cooler nights, allowing other chemicals to take over, giving us those nice color changes here with the yellow, orange, and the red showing up here that will of course happen later into September, but more so into the month of October when we actually get closer to the typical peak and that's around mid to late October here across central Ohio. So something to look forward to, but it's still going to be a little bit of time before we actually see a lot more color change happen. Yeah, still a little bit of time out there, but you know those cool nights, it's kind of getting us ready for fall. Yeah, I mean everyone getting into that, you know, kind of cozy feel, thinking about maybe uh, of course pumpkin that's been out, uh, pumpkin spice is <laughs> back for many areas, and uh, thinking maybe for some apple cider, and just enjoying all the great things about the fall season. Yeah, definitely some great things to look forward to there. And switching to another season that unfortunately would be the continuation of the fire season out west, and as of this morning, more than 425,000 acres have burned and there's hundreds of thousands of emergency responders working to contain those wildfires that are wreaking havoc across California. Yeah, and I mean, it's just been ripping uh, through and destroying just so many structures all over the state, which has been just, a, you know, such a disaster, including this fire and others that have been burning across uh, parts of Oregon and, of course, even into Canada. Yeah, we know that outbreak, part, part of it started because of something called dry lightning, which is when you get those lightning strikes about rainfall out there. That sparked at least a dozen wildfires for residents still recovering from those devastating fires earlier in the year. This change in the weather has certainly not been welcome news. And with more on the conditions firefighters are facing, we turn to uh, Juanita Adam, Adam reporting from Fresno, California on that. These dark clouds looming over fire crews battling the Garnet fire could bring some new problems to the firefight. It's a knockdown drag out, you know, fight day to day. Experts say even though they've made progress in containment lines, the weather has shifted. We've already had a little bit of dry lightning um, even last night. Garnet Fire PIO Sam Wu says they are expecting quite a bit of lightning and not a lot of rain. That's something that we're definitely looking out for and we're preparing for. The fire activity is going to be more active because of the fire weather. And if that lightning strikes outside of their containment lines, it could cause additional fires and additional problems. The other thing that we have to be concerned with is the, the downdraft, the winds from uh, the thunderstorms themselves. Wu says dry lightning was the catalyst for what's become one of the Central Valley's biggest fires so far this year. Every acre matters and that uh, we are aggressively looking at the situation and due to the volatile nature of the situation, it's hard to know what might happen next. The fire is unpredictable. Um, we knew these were hot spot areas. We knew they were going to cause us some trouble if the conditions were to align. For now, they say their incident team is not just focused on the fire, but they're using every resource to stay ahead of the flames. Our work, you know, continued on those containment lines, predominantly in that kind of Balch Camp area and up on the uh, Tea Kettle Experimental Forest area. Speaking of fires, here in central Ohio, you can now get involved in helping to protect and serve. The Ohio State Fire Marshal recently opened a portal recruiting people to become volunteer firefighters. Yeah, and actually uh, this uh, portal helps out uh, more of the rural, com rural communities uh, find folks who are willing to work and uh, want to give back. Becoming familiar with, you, with the equipment, uh, the different types of, of tools that we have to use, the different types of situation you'll get into to be able to communicate clearly. And if you're interested, we have a link to that portal on our website on 10tv.com. And speaking of citizens 
fighting fires. That's exactly what's happening in some parts of California as residents are still recovering from some of those devastating fires earlier this year. Yeah, and some are actually preparing to fight the next one on their own. And the CBS is uh, Carter Evans, who has not only covered wildfires, but battled them, has the story. After flames ripped through the Pacific Palisades, among the widespread devastation, clusters of homes still stand. Not because firefighters saved them, residents did. Some had professional equipment. Others used whatever they could find. Court Wagner evacuated his family and grabbed a garden hose. Just putting out some really hot coals. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would say I couldn't have saved anything. But the truth is, you can save stuff. I mean, I saved multiple homes with garden hoses. You can see this fire burning behind us right now. I was covering the Palisades fire January 7th, and it was clear firefighters were overwhelmed. One of the real concerning things for me, though, is I live a block right down there. My wife, Lauren, is also a reporter, and together we defended our home, drawing on decades of wildfire coverage. You can see that ember cast behind me. This is how homes catch on fire. See, it's these embers that are the problem. We chased every one for 14 hours. But unchecked at nearby homes, they were igniting. There's a spot fire over there. Let me go get that fire. There are not enough firefighters or fire engines to adequately defend every structure in the path of the fire. And there will never be. And there will never be. L.A. County Fire Chief Anthony Maroney's department helped battle the Palisades fire and nearby Eaton fire. It was only because you were allowed to stay behind that you were able to save your house and your neighbor's houses. Which is why the chief is now saying something the public hasn't heard before. And we've always told people that when the evacuation order comes, you must leave. We've departed from that narrative with the proper training, with the proper equipment, and with the proper home hardening and defensible space, you can stay behind and prevent your house from burning down. It's not for everyone, especially those with health problems or if there's no escape route. To do it safely, L.A. County Fire created a community brigade. I'm a mechanical engineer, a landscape contractor, a marketer. Firefighters trained residents like Keegan Gibbs, who lost his home in a wildfire. That was the motivation that kept driving me to going, how do we solve this at the community level, instead of looking to other people to try to solve it for us. We're losing in the thousands of structures in, in these impossible firefights, in situations that we've never experienced before. Something has to change. Something's changing, and we need to change with it. So that next time, more homes like these will be left standing. For I in America, I'm Carter Evans in Los Angeles. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. This is a video of the Northern Lights seen from the International Space Station. You notice the amount of red showing up there. You see a lot of green as well. Yeah. A really cool sight that happened just the other day. And actually back here on Earth, we uh, saw in the Northern Lights across several states, uh, including parts of Minnesota, Michigan, and even into uh, areas a little bit further south. Not quite around here, but still a cool sight. Yeah, I mean, really cool video there. And it shows you just how far up in the space space yeah that event actually <laughs> takes place we just see so little of it yeah. here on earth but so wild yeah absolutely but we can see our own really cool events here on earth in fact this is the kilauea volcano in hawaii spit fountains of lava yesterday morning that grew wow. up to 330 feet speaking of going high in the yeah, air that's wild as at times throughout the day tuesday it's possible that episodes like this will continue through the next few weeks. Yeah, and of Look course, lava. yeah, it happens a lot out there, of course, with the uh, Kilauea volcano, uh, but still just crazy to see that uh, just dramatic video of that lava yeah. spewing. At least the, these types of scenes there, it looks like this is all contained yeah. away from people, yes. away from structures, which is where you want to see yep. stuff like that. Definitely good. Place. Yep, so some cool video there to check out here at the end of our show. And speaking of the end of our show, that's the end of the 10 TV weather impact well, experience for today yeah. here on 10 TV <laughs> plus, but that doesn't mean we're done tracking the weather. Like yes. I said, we've got a weather impact alert day coming up tomorrow, and that means Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz, he'll be here later tonight to keep you updated on all the latest with that rain and our forecast as we head toward the football games again this weekend. Of course, between now and then, you can always find more online at 10tv.com. Have a great afternoon.